Hello friends, welcome to the Unite Coaching. In this lecture, we are going to see about vector analysis for mechanics. Right, so in mechanics, we very often deal with vectors. Vectors such as forces, accelerations, velocities, momentums, torques, torques otherwise known as uh, moment of forces. All these quantities are basically vectors. So, before moving on to these quantities, we first need to know about the vectors how should we deal with the vectors and how should we add them, subtract them, multiply them right that is the dot product and cross product all of that so we are going to see how should we do that for vectors okay so let's explore it so the first question we have is what is a vector so, the by definition, a vector is a physical quantity which has both the magnitude and direction. Right. So, here we have two terminologies associated with the definition that is magnitude and direction. So, let's understand them. Okay. So, if I want to tell you that you need to move to Guwahati from Mumbai. Okay. So, what you need to do is you need to travel a distance of 3000 kilometers from Mumbai to Guwahati. Right. So, the quantity here is distance. Right. And the magnitude associated with this distance or this physical quantity distance is 3000 kilometers. Right. So, this 3000 kilometers that is a scalar value is giving us an idea about the physical quantity that is it is showing us that you need to move this this uh, this this much uh, distance to travel this much right so the magnitude associated with this quantity is basically the scalar value associated with any physical quantity is known as the magnitude here in this case the distance is having a magnitude of 3000 kilometers but what is direction so uh, to move from Mumbai to Guwahati, you need to travel a distance of 3000 kilometers. But in what direction? There are infinite directions you can move a distance of 3000 kilometers from Mumbai. Right. But to move to reach to Guwahati, you need to travel this distance in the east direction. So if you go to Google Maps, you can see that uh, in the Indian map, in the map of India, the Guwahati is uh, present in Assam state, right, which is present on the northeast part of India, right. But uh, Mumbai, which is present in Maharashtra, Maharashtra is in the western part of the country, right. So, to move from Mumbai to Guwahati, you need to move a distance of three, or uh, you need to travel a distance of 3000 kilometers from Mumbai to Guwahati, right. So, this uh, direction associated with uh, the quantity or this travel or this action of yours is telling us that uh, to achieve the particular goal you need to also define the direction right so we have a direction associated with this uh, uh, travel also right so the magnitude associated with this quantity distance and this uh, direction associated with this quantity distance is basically giving us an idea uh, how vector or what a vector is right so any physical quantity which has both magnitude and direction is known as vector right so another example you want to see then suppose if uh, uh, you are uh, if someone is running then you can uh, define two quantities or two terminologies or two specific uh, values associated with the person running right so you can uh, talk about the speed at which the person is running right and then the direction in which the person is running right so combining both these quantities that is the direction and the speed will give us the velocity of the person right so velocity is also a vector quantity right so as you have uh, might studied right so the vector is a quantity which is having both magnitude and direction but uh, how do we represent these quantities in mathematical terms or in geometrical terms so in mathematical terms suppose we have a general vector v 
then this uh, bold phase letter V will represent the original vector which has both magnitude and direction right so suppose if you want to represent this vector in three dimensional coordinates that is 3d then the vector V will be written as V1 i cap plus V2 j cap plus V3 k cap right where V1 V2 and V3 are basically the coordinates or oh, sorry the components of the vector V along x axis along y axis and along z axis right and these vectors that is i cap j cap and k cap are basically the unit vectors along the x axis the y axis and the z axis that is in the they are basically the vectors which are having a magnitude equal to 1 and they are pointing in the positive x direction positive y direction and positive z direction right so this is just the representation of a vector quantity in three dimensional system or three dimensional coordinate system okay and the magnitude associated this vector will be represented by an italic form of the letter v right so here you can see how important it is to inculcate the importance of this uh, vector quantity right so to represent this vector quantity we have two types of representation right so first is the vector quantity itself and the magnitude associated with this right so the vector quantity associated with a given vector or the physical or the vector associated with uh, a physical quantity given is basically represented by the bold phase letter and uh, the magnitude associated with this will be represented by a italic form of the letter and the it can also be written as the or it can also be denoted by the modulus of the vector right so the bold face letter v and the modulus of this bold face letter v right and then we have uh, we can also represent this by the italic form of the letter that is v only right and this will be equal to under root v1 square plus v2 square plus v3 squared right so this is how we represent the magnitude of a vector quantity and the direction associated with a vector quantity and the vector quantity itself right so this is a coordinate system of representation of a given vector quantity right but now we want to represent it geometrically so for geometrically representing a vector we use arrows right so for an arrow to be represent uh, for a vector to be represented we use arrows and we have three uh, terminologies or three terms associated with a arrow representation of a vector that is first is head that is the triangular part on an arrow represents the head of the vector or it uh, determines the direction of the vector right so the whatever direction this head is pointing in will be the direction of the vector right and then we have the length associated with the arrow right so the length associated with the arrow determines the magnitude of the vector quantity right and then we have one uh, uh, the end part of the arrow and it is known as the tail of the arrow right so this is tail part this is head part and this is the length which uh, gives us some idea about the magnitude so here you can see that i have represented three vectors that is one vector this another vector this and another vector this so by looking at this vector or this uh, geometrical representation only that is the arrow representation only you can see that this vector is pointing into the right direction right or if you want to talk about in uh, the north east or uh, southwest uh, terms then this will be north right this will be east this will be south and this will be west right so here you can see that <clears throat> talking about this direction the the first uh, vector is pointing into the east direction the second vector is pointing into the west direction and the third vector is pointing into the northeast direction right so this is northeast direction right so the third vector is pointing into the northeast direction right and here you can also say that the magnitude of this vector is greater than this vector and this vector right so the length of this arrow is uh, biggest of all these three so this vector is having the highest magnitude 
so this is how the geometrical representation of a vector is used okay so now we will see one example which we have in the syllabus is force okay so a force is defined as a vector quantity that is which has both the magnitude and direction is defined as the rate of change of momentum okay so momentum is also a vector quantity we will see in the upcoming lectures what uh, what we mean by momentum and uh, what we mean by the force as well right so force is a basically a physical quantity which is responsible for the motion of any given object right so in the layman's term you can understand this as this way but uh, more mathematically or more rigorously the definition of force is defined or the force is defined as the rate of change of momentum right so force is defined as d by dt rate of change of momentum right so rate of change is basically always talked with respect to time so d by dt of momentum uh, this p represents basically the momentum okay so the rate of d by dt of p is basically defined as force and in our case or in in this syllabus for uh, mes uh, that is maharashtra engineering Service examination uh, we will always use this force that is th this uh, formula that is f is equals to m into a that is mass into acceleration and acceleration is also a vector quantity right so you can see that force is equals to mass into acceleration this is how the force is defined okay and the unit of force is basically the uh, si unit or the international uh, system of unit uh, for the force is basically newton right so newton is the unit of force in si system and kg per meter kg meter per second square if we want to uh, just see how we got this kg meter per second square then you can uh, see that the unit of m or the mass is basically kg in si system and acceleration the unit of acceleration in si system is basically meter per second square so the unit of S, uh, force in si system will be kg meter per second square and to this kg meter per second square only we call newton okay so newton is basically one newton is, will be basically equal to one kg meter per second square right so this is what the unit of force means and we have one more term associated with the force that more often occurs in the engineering problems that is one kg of force will be equal to 9.8 times of newton right so one kg force is basically equal to 9.8 newtons right so this is all about vector and force okay so now let's see how should we add two vectors together okay so let's see so now we have vector addition basically we have two rules for the vector addition first of which is triangle law of vector addition so the triangle law so the triangle law basically says that if we have two vectors a and b then we need to arrange them in such a fashion that the tail of vector b will be on the head of vector a then we will draw a new vector vector c which will start from the tail of vector a and it will go towards the head of vector b right so you can see that here we had vector a and vector b then we just uh, draw or we just put it them in such a fashion that vector b will be uh, will start from the head of vector a, uh, a and then it will go on and then we have drawn the new vector vector c from these two vectors then this vector c or the new vector will be the addition vector of vector a and vector b or the resultant vector of vector b that is it will it will produce the same effect as it would have been produced by to get by together uh, combining vector n vector b right 
and here you can see that uh, the angle between vector a and vector b is theta so how do we define the angle between two vectors so what we need to do is that we you uh, for the triangle law you basically take a vector a and then uh, as uh, i have mentioned or i have just told you you put the tail of vector b onto the head of vector a and then uh, move into the direction of vector b right so this will be the vector b then the angle vector b will make with vector a is basically equal to you extend vector a and then take the angle with vector b right so the angle in this case is we have defined to be theta we are just representing the angle with theta right so this is basically the angle theta right the other way you can see this as you are just doing what you are just extending the vector a or just translating the vector a from this position to this position right so uh, we have translated vector a to this new position and this will be our vector a right so this will be our new vector a uh, that is we have just translated vector a so that we have uh, both their tails attached right so the tail of vector a we have just attached to uh, vector b and then whatever angle they will make in between them will be known uh, as the angle between the two vectors right so in this case vector theta so similarly the angle uh, vector c or the resultant vector is making with ang uh, vector a is basically alpha right so vector c vector a we have uh, attached both of their tails and then whatever angle they are making is the angle between vector c and vector a right so this is how angle between them is defined now this is uh, just the geometrical representation right geometrical representation now we want to see how should we define this in the mathematical terms okay so let's see so mathematically it says that we need to uh, if a and b are two vectors to be added a diagram is drawn in which the tail of b coincide with the head of a then the vector joining the tail of a with the head of b is the vector sum of a and b or the resultant vector of a and b right now suppose we have vector a as a1 i cap plus a2 j cap plus a3 k cap and b is equals to b1 i cap plus b2 j cap plus b3 k cap then their addition will be equal to c equal to a plus b here you can see that i have uh, bold phase the vectors right and the components is are just basically normal uh, phased right so bold phase letters are used for vector and the normal phase letters are used for components and normal phase letter c will be or a or b will be used for the magnitude of the vector right so the addition vector c will be equal to a1 plus b1 i cap a2 plus b2 i k j cap uh, sorry a3 plus b3 k cap right so here you can see that we have just added the component added them component wise right so i cap i cap taken together j cap j cap put it together and then k cap k cap we have put it together so this is how we easily add them mathematically and to find the uh, magnitude of this vector we can say that the magnitude will be equal to magnitude of the resultant vector c will be equal to under root a1 plus b1 squared right a under root that is let me write it here under root a1 plus b1 squared plus a2 plus b2 squared right here it should be squared plus right a3 plus b3 squared right so a3 plus b3 squared 
and this will be equal to c that is the magnitude of the vector c all right but this will be used when we are given the vectors in the three dimensional form right but if we are only given the magnitude of a vector and b vector and we are given the angle between the two then how should we find or how should we find the magnitude of vector c then we have one formula which says that magnitude of c will be equal to under root magnitude of a squared magnitude of b squared plus 2ab that is uh, this is magnitude of a vector this is magnitude of b vector into cos of angle between them right so uh, this was when we are given the vectors in three dimensional form and this when we are given only the uh, when we are given only the uh, their magnitudes and the angle between them right and if you want to find the angle between vector c and vector a that is angle alpha then we have one more formula which says that tan of this alpha will be equal to b sin theta upon a plus b cos theta right so tan of uh, this alpha will be equal to b sin theta upon a plus b cos theta right where b a are basically the magnitudes of the vector a and vector b and theta we all we already know the angle between the two vectors right so this is basically the triangle law of vector addition similarly to this we have the parallelogram law of vector addition and this is very similar to the first one right so if uh, the uh, rule says that if a and b are two vectors to be added but now they represent the sides adjacent sides of the side adjacent sides of the parallelogram then the diagonal will be the resultant of the vector right so if we have one parallelogram right and vector a and vector b basically represents the adjacent sides of this parallelogram right then the diagonal will basically represent the vector addition of these two vectors right so this is how a parallelogram law is stated but you can see that from this law we can also deduce this law right how do we do this law that is triangle law from the parallelogram law so the parallel uh, parallelogram laws is that the the vectors which needs to be added should be the adjacent sides of the parallelogram right so this is basically b vector this is basically a vector but if you move this vector b to this side right you can see that we are translating the vector b to the this side then this will basically be will become triangle law right so this is interchangeable so you need just need to remember these formulas only then uh, the theta in this case will be equal to theta right the uh, between the two sides so we have already we are given in the fashion that their tails are attached so the angle between vector a and vector b will be the adjacent uh, the angle between the adjacent sides and the angle uh, between vector c and uh, vector a will be equal to what will be equal to the angle between diagonal and the vector and this side right so here the formulas remain same that is if a and b are two vectors a1 i cap plus a2 j cap plus a3 k cap and b1 b equal to b1 i cap plus b2 j cap plus b3 k cap in the uh, three dimensional fashion then we have c will be equal to a plus b will and this will be equal to as we have seen previously similarly the magnitude will be will uh, can be found by this method also and by taking the squares of these uh, components adding them and then again taking the under root right or the square root of them so this is how we use this formulas and again tan alpha will be equal to this only as we have seen previously so these are basically the addition law of vectors right so they are basically generally used for manipulating the vectors or to simplifying a given problem right and uh, there is uh, one more method we can use for simplifying a given problem uh, so now let's see that but before that we have one note here 
and the note says that a special triangle which more often occurs in physics problems or the mechanics problems right so the triangle is basically 3 4 5 triangle right so 3 4 5 triangle in that case this triangle will have angles as 53 degree and 37 degree so the uh, side opposite to 53 degree will be 4 and the side opposite to 37 degree will be 3 now see uh, looking at this triangle you can uh, directly calculate the sine of 37 as 3 by 5 that is opposite upon hypotenuse so opposite here is 3 and hypotenuse is 5 so the sine of 37 will be 3 by 5 sine of 53 will be 4 by 5 sine of 53 will be opposite upon hypotenuse so 4 by 5 similarly cos of 37 will be 4 by 5 that is adjacent upon hypotenuse cos of 53 will be adjacent upon hypotenuse that is 3 upon 5 adjacent side divided by hypotenuse right and then tan of 37 will be calculated as uh, sine 37 divided by cos 37 this will be equal to 3 by 4 and here cos 53 will be sorry here it should be tan okay so we have now tan fifty three right so tan fifty three will be equal to four by three right so this is the pro, uh, triangle which more often occurs in the physics problems so now let's see the uh, resolution method of two the vectors right so we will see that method in terms of forces